Last night, the Sixers really needed a gem from James Harden, and they got 5 for 13 in lousy defense, and this is now what he is, and we've got to be okay with that. When it goes downhill, it goes downhill fast as a pro athlete. In the bubble season, he averaged 30 a year. It wasn't long ago. Four years ago, he was an MVP. But in the last 11 playoff games, he's been held under 25 points, and this is who he is. He is no longer a one. And frankly, very quickly, he is now no longer a two. He could be a three on a championship team. He closed too many nightclubs. He didn't take care of his body. And he's only 32. That is not coincidentally the name of the age of Cam Newton when he fell off a cliff and Russell Westbrook's age when he fell off a cliff. If you don't take care of your game and you don't take care of your body, sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's Cam just one. It ends quickly. He is now 32 and 33. That's the age, 10 years of either neglect or just not staying current. That's what my wife always says. Stay current. Westbrook didn't struggle to hit the three. Cam's efficiency now is a huge liability. And James Harden just didn't stay in shape. Now, here's the good news. He can still be impactful. He can still be part of a great team. There are nights, uh, you know, he can facilitate better now. But the thing that's, I think, if you're a Philadelphia 76er fan, the good news is he's got some self-awareness. He knows what he is. So I went and looked up this morning. He doesn't have a single game as a 76er with over 20 shots. You know, Westbrook's still living in the tunnel. Carmelo forever lived in the tunnel. Harden's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a 20-shot-a-game guy. I can't get those shots. So he can still be impactful. He can still be part of a championship team eventually. But they needed him last night, and he's just not there. Th this is what James Harden is. Now, I still think the Sixers won the trade. Why? Because he's a starter and a top three starter for Philadelphia. You had to get Ben Simmons out of the building. You're not going to play Andre Drummond much in a big spot late in the game. So the Sixers won the trade. But maybe it's not the slam dunk because he's a limited player. And if you combine Embiid's injuries with Harden's pretty fast erosion, he struggles now to get by people like he once did. This is not a championship team. Uh, if Embiid comes back, they can be a really good team. But Embiid's going to be hobbling through these playoffs even if he does come back. And this is now what Harden is. The good news for Philadelphia uh, Tyrese Maxey is really good, and Tobias Harris can give you 23 points on any night of a series. But this is the reality of being a pro athlete. When you don't stay current, either you don't keep up with your game, you don't refine it, you don't sandpaper it every year, or you don't take care of yourself. The number's like 32, 33-year-old. That, that off the I mean, Cam Newton, one very far removed from an MVP, off the cliff. Like, like, couldn't beat out Mac Jones. We'll just get him out of the room. Westbrook. I mean, it was the last three stops have been painful. And it's not as painful for Harden because he can still hit jumpers, but he can't get by, guys. He just can't get by him. He can't get the shots. He knows he can't get the shots. All right, now we move to the Suns Mavericks. I said I wanted to watch the first game of the series and see how the matchup went. I felt Dallas had to win one of the first couple of games in the series. They're not terribly deep. They're going to rely heavily on Luka. So you're not going to win a seven game series. The longer it goes, the worse it is for Dallas because they're so reliant on Luka. Well, I watched last night. This series is big trouble for Dallas. Number one is um, Phoenix is going to control the boards. They did. Phoenix is not reliant on one player. So as the series extends, you get a better rested, a deeper team. Uh, Dallas is actually in the exact same spot they were with Dirk Nowitzki. They've got a transformational player. Luka is better than Dirk, but they've got a transformational player, and now they've got to find a two. And because he's great, the expectations will always be high, but the gap between, you know, Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie and Luka is, is the Grand Canyon. And if you look around the NBA right now, Phoenix has three legitimate scores. Milwaukee's got three legitimate scores. Golden State, depending on Jordan Poole or Wiggins, can have four legitimate scores. Even Philadelphia with Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Harris or, or Harden each being a half, you got about three, three and a half scores. Dallas has one. And the problem for Dallas is they're, they're a little Bitcoin. 
They've got to play above themselves and get spikes to win. They need a 48-point game from Luka. They need Spencer Dinwiddie to hit six threes. They need these spikes to be successful. Phoenix is Berkshire Hathaway. Mid-range jumpers. Same performance every night. Seven straight playoff games. Shot over 50%. You know exactly what you're getting with the Phoenix Suns. They hit more mid-range jumpers last night, this is true, against Dallas than Utah hit in the entire series against Dallas. So Phoenix is a nightmare for Dallas. They're going to give the exact same game, multiple scores. Everybody's got a roll. They don't need any spikes to win. Nobody has to be amazing to win. Dallas needs guys to play over their head to get these eight three-point quarters they've got they've got to get some big breaks they're going to be up and down in this series and despite last night's score I watched every second is just not it wasn't very competitive and this this is where all five Phoenix starters in double figures shot over 50 percent never singularly reliant on any player so Phoenix is a really tough matchup you know we always look in the NBA at star power but what you see is Phoenix's chemistry on both ends of the floor is fantastic. And it's funny how chemistry works. It's sort of like if couples hang out together and they build a stronger relationship. It's sort of that way with basketball teams. Like Phoenix guys didn't take a lot of games off. They like played together all season long. Everybody's playing at least 70 games. What a shock. Look how good the chemistry for Phoenix is. Look at how they pass. And now Golden State had guys that missed a lot of games, but they've been playing together now for 10 years. So look at how good the chemistry is with Golden State. I said that yesterday. They move the ball so well. They know where everybody's going to be. Kevin Durant and Kyrie, they're stars. They don't play together enough. It's like Philadelphia. Now Embiid's hurt. A lot of balls to juggle. Some chemistry issues. So... You start looking around this league, and I know everybody thinks the NBA is star power, but, you know, Boston looked really good against Brooklyn. Jalen Brown, Marcus Mark, Jason Tatum played together for five years. Then you start looking at Milwaukee, core group of guys, mostly played together for five years. You look at Phoenix last night. It's just you get the exact same performance out of the Suns. You're going to get double figures, Chris Paul. Booker's going to have over 20. Mikhail Bridges, great defender, gives you about 14 Last night, DeAndre Ayton had his way. I know exactly what I get from Phoenix. And I don't even need him to play well. If they just give me what they give me every night, I win the series in five games. Dallas may steal a couple games. Dinwiddie gets hot. Jalen Brunson plays over his head. But I watched that thing last night. And uh, uh, as Jason Kidd said after the game, you, you got to give him something more than Luka. As it was with Dirk as it'll be with Luka. When they find that great two, then it's a championship team. Until then, feels like Bitcoin to me. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.